Well, there's a slideshow of Tupelo, Mississippi, after the tornado that they got struck by in the last week of April 2014. And these pictures, these were taken right after the tornado hit, the day of and then the morning after, really before there was not much of any recovery effort. People were still trying to, to grasp reality. And there was a lot to grasp. There was quite a bit to take in. And this was just an F3. But this is our, uh, our entourage here, the people I got to hang out with when I was there. So we got David and Megan, the people I stayed with. They were gracious enough to open their door to me when I invited myself over there after I heard of the tornado. <laughs> and I had so much fun with them. And then Megan's parents, Danny and Martha, they were a lot of fun. I just everybody was just super cool there. I I, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to come back home. And then we got Patrick and Angela, and Patrick and Angela were only able to hang out with us for the weekend because they got real jobs. And this is the first place we went to. So you can see the trees that are still standing. Imagine there was uh, twice as many still standing. Now you'd know what this guy's backyard looked like before the tornado. It was, there was so much to do. We got there, there was probably, uh, there was dozens and dozens of volunteers already going to town on this property. And they were starting on one side, there was a bunch to do in the backyard. There was a bunch to do on this side of the house. And uh, it's hard to really get an angle of everything. Just because no matter how you look at it, it's a mess. So, we started cutting, started hauling stuff towards the street, because that's the rules. If you want it dumped, you got to get it within 25 feet of the road. That way they can come pick it up with their big fancy equipment. And you can see these trees just got mangled, just straight to death, most of them. And then you see that blue tarp on the guy's house. There was three logs resting on the corner of this dude's home. Somebody... <laughs> Asked him how his roof was. He was like, oh, it's in my closet. <laughs> you know, these people were good sports about it, but uh, what choice do you have, you know? Either that or you can just be in a bad mood for all these people that are coming to help. <laughs> and there was a bunch of people that had heavy equipment, too. Like this guy. Uh, he was very short-tempered. So, we got most of the stuff out of the way, enough for him to be able to get in there and pull those off the house. The homeowner, the guy there on the, the far right, he wasn't really feeling it at first as far as us getting the logs off the corner there. And then his insurance agent's like, well, you can save a grand if you get rid of those trees right now. So the guy comes over to all of us and he's like, well, let's do this. And then he watched. And then here's the final product of it, and there's still stuff to move. There is going to be stuff to move there for months, I imagine. There was so much crap. But hey, it looks a lot better than it did, except for the corner of his house there. Then we're, on a, we're just taking a water break. Once I look over and I see this house at the end of the street, and uh, he got a a few high fives from a couple of these trees. <laughs> so I walked over to get a better picture. And you can see they're starting to put two by fours up there on the roof. And uh, the neighbor was telling me that this house has a wedding scheduled for it the next day. And uh, so this, the homeowners, uh, I don't know how many people he called in. They were just swarming this place trying to get it ready. By the time we left, they had it covered in four by eight sheets of plywood on top of the shingles. And I never did hear how that one turned out. <laughs> it may not have been as picturesque as the bride was hoping for. This was the next place we went to. That slab right there. The, uh, the wife's mom used to live there. There used to be a house there. Used to be. The 
couple. I never did meet the the mom. It was the wife's mom. And the wife was inside most of the time. She had a hard time containing her emotions. Especially when complete strangers showed up just to help out. Not asking for anything. That really, <laughs> really messed with her in a good way. So... The husband, he was saying that he moved all this stuff back onto the slab and he was helping us pick through all that crap back there in the trees and just sorting out what can be burned, what can be taken to the street, what needs to be set aside that's just sentimental value or can still be salvaged or whatever. And there was, uh, there was a lot of stuff to salvage and just to deal with in general. Like fiberglass insulation, everybody's favorite thing on bare skin. And you can just see the trees. I mean, that was... It did a number on this neighborhood. So, we just started by getting all the crap out that we could. I mean, the, just everything that used to be in a house or on a house. Just had to get that out of the way before we could start cutting anything. And David and Megan are there sporting the four-wheeler. They got a trailer behind them. And then we just load stuff up on that and then drive it to the street and dump it and come back for more. And that was the routine. And it was several trips made. So, did that, got it clear enough. And then we started getting trees out of the way. And then we uncovered a couple of sheds that we couldn't even see at first. I didn't notice them. We ended up just cutting stuff, having fun with it. And then we were talking to the homeowners just about their experience with it. He said this tornado was come and gone in like three seconds. It was real quiet and then it started raining harder and harder and harder. And then there's that, uh, that freight train sound almost like a tornado just coming through three seconds. Then it was gone. And then just real gentle rain. So this guy and some other guys in the neighborhood... But they, they all got together and started making the rounds for everybody, making sure everybody was cool. And he said they got to the to the neighbor's house across the street, started checking on her. And they couldn't even find her trailer. So we were looking, he ended up pointing to where it used to be, between uh, that white van and uh, the pile of rubble across the street, somewhere over there. But he said the tornado went right through the middle of that trailer, just sliced it in half. And half her trailer came and landed over on the other side of all the trees we were cutting, and the other half went the other way. But she survived. I guess she was under like eight feet of debris. And uh, the husband of this couple and a few other guys were digging stuff up and kept hearing her go, Ouch! Ow! And then the guy was like, Man, I figured, I thought sure she was all busted up, but. We got her uncovered, man. All she needed was like 30, 40 stitches, and she's fine. And it was, it seemed like everybody we talked to was just astounded that there was not a single fatality. The worst, I think, everything that I was aware of that anybody had heard was uh, this chick needing stitches, and I think somebody broke their arm. This next place, man, this was a, uh, this guy had some trees. If you can't tell by this one here, there's a Megan and Danny <laughs> sizing everything up when we first got there. We got the truck and the generator, all the saws and, and the four-wheeler and just trying to figure out where on earth to start because there was four trees, no, five trees, plus whatever was in the backyard. Nobody, None of us went back there because that's where the homeowner and his family were working getting their stuff cleaned out back there. So we just started out here. And uh, I took this half of this tree, and then Danny ended up taking the other. <laughs> and uh, just went to town on this one. Ended up getting all the... It's hard to call those branches when they're the size of other trees. But we got them down, just left with an enormous enormous stump. I mean, the base of that tree was probably at least four feet across. It was probably 60, 75 feet 
long, just laying there on the ground. Then, that was after my reign of terror. I still had to cut some of those logs up into pieces so we could get them on the trailer. But, as David and Megan and Martha <laughs> sizing up the damage, <laughs> it really is a lot of fun doing that stuff. Then there's Danny on the other side doing his thing. You can see the pain he's inflicted on this tree so far. Man, this was another tree on that same property. I, We kind of started on that one, but didn't get real far. There was people that just that needed trees off their house, off, out of their driveway, off cars, you know, whatever. And then there was places like this where it was just kind of an eyesore. So we helped out some, and then we found somebody else that needed a tree off of their deck. So we went and ended up doing that too. But the middle of this tree, man, that part that's still standing straight up, that's at least 12 feet tall. And then for scale, we've got Megan and Martha, and then Patrick there on the other side of Martha. This is that same tree from a different angle. And uh, you can see there is plenty of work still to be done on this guy's yard. This house, this guy had done a bunch just by himself. But, you know, when you're just one dude, you can only do so much. We just kind of jumped in where we could. And just started moving logs toward the street for him. And started cutting stuff up into a little more manageable pieces, making our way down to the base of the tree as far as we could cut. <laughs> and then I ended up, there was a couple trees on the roof, so I was up there taking some pictures while everybody else was down there on the ground working. And that's just, that's one of the trees. This dude ended up having three still in the front yard. One was resting right up against his house, like right along the front there. The base of that tree, that one was probably at least three feet across. And these things were just monsters, and they were huge. That was my project. When I was up there, there was a couple of trees just resting there. And the homeowner was just watching me like a hawk, making sure I didn't screw up his roof. So I was just cutting off a few feet at a time. I got back like eight or ten feet, and then the trees just stood up on their own. <laughs> I look down at the homeowner, he looks at me, and... Just kind of shrugs his shoulders. <laughs> so I get down the ladder, he puts the ladder away, we go back out in the front yard and keep going on that. <laughs> and the rest of these are just pictures. We did some good on these, some of them we just stopped and there was not a whole lot we could do. But just extra pictures, just giving you an idea of just how big these trees were and how much work there is to do. But there was a lot of hands that showed up. It's just cool to see how many people converge in a place just to make a difference. So, that was my Tupelo, Mississippi adventure. And it was a lot of fun. I appreciate all the support I got from everybody.